Hey guys, Wells Knight here, and welcome back to another episode of Pixelmon from the Pocket Pixels server. Hope you guys are having an awesome day. I'm having a fantastic day. Reminder, this, this series is sponsored by Pocket Pixels. And if you want to come join us here on the server, IP and the instructions are in the description, play.pocketpixels.net. By now, you guys probably know the drill. We're going to jump onto the yellow server. And I want to show you guys something that just blows my mind. So last time I showed you the progress of Wellshurst, the city was roughly, oh, about this big. I think that was like maybe two episodes ago. It has almost doubled in size since then. We've got this whole extra area of this city over here that has been added uh, <laughs> just in that short amount of time. Last episode was pretty much all about the Little Cup Tournament. Uh, but it's just crazy. We got extra Poké Centers popping up. I mean, the map, there's a map of Wellshurst here. Th this is like a third of the town at this point. It's just nuts. <laughs> it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, so yeah, absolutely crazy. Uh, what I want to do today is I want to show you guys uh, the, uh, what is it? The Clock Tower? Warp Clock Tower. Yes, this is it. Okay. So, basically, um, in a previous episode, I don't remember exactly when it was, we were talking a little bit about how to make money on the server so that you can buy stuff from other players and all that kind of good stuff. And there was the Lighthouse, which was basically a battle tower where you could fight NPCs and earn, I think it was something like 5,000 Poké Dollars a day or something like that. Well, the Lighthouse has been decommissioned and replaced with this, the Clock Tower. So this clock tower has a bunch of NPCs in it uh, that have Pokemon, and they range. There's kind of details here, um, but basically there are three difficulties, I guess you would say, depending on the floor of the clock tower you're on. Level one is going to be uh, trainers that have level 25 Pokemon. Level two, they will have level 50 Pokemon, I believe, and then three and four will be level 100 Pokemon. I think. Let's just double check this. So this is this should be an elevator block. Uh, the, the server, please. There we go. Uh, so yeah, this is the first floor. We've got level 25 trainers. Second floor. Oh, okay. So second floor, the trainers will be equal in level to you. So that, that means that they will be equal to your highest Pokemon, although this one is labeled as broken. I wonder if that's all of them or just that one. Uh, either way. And then the top floor. Here we go. Uh, the very top floor will be level 100 Pokemon. Okay, cool. So let's give this a try. Um, are there PCs up here? Doesn't look like it. Looks like I'm going to have to pop down to the first floor to grab a PC, and we will just assemble a team. Uh, let me put this EV egg over here. Um, let's just assemble a team based on my competitive uh, Pokemon here. So let's see, what would be good? Actually, let's go home, because I probably want to grab some things, potentially from the competitive held items chest right here. Yeah, like this black sludge for Toxapex. Uh, so we'll just put you there. So let's see, what would be a good solid team with what we have here? I'm thinking Corviknight Toxapex is a good defensive core. Uh, could also just go Ferrothorn, honestly, over Corviknight, but I think Corviknight's probably fine. Uh, let's go with a Barrascuda. Let's get... Do you have Stealth Rock? You have Stealth Rock. I don't necessarily need a bunch of Stealth Rockers. Um, Barrascuda. We don't want to go... I probably want like a Firewater Grass Core. So let's get a Volcarona. And then let's get a... Cart... Hana, maybe. And then we've got. Huh. Maybe. 
You can't Mega Evolve, so some of these are not going to be super useful. Maybe like Hydreigon? Yeah. Something like this, maybe, as just a team. It's, you know, we throw it together, hopefully it'll get the job done. We'll see. Uh, I also do have Nidoqueen, which is actually great because it just has excellent coverage kind of across the board. Um, but I'm thinking, yeah, something like Toxapex, Corviknight, um, etc. Let's try this. So Warp. Oh, hold on. Let's make sure they have the right held items, right? Yeah, we're good. Okay. So Warp, uh, Clock Tower. And let's give this a try. Let's just do one battle first on the second, uh, I'm sorry, the third floor. Or is this, the, I guess this is the second floor. I guess the very, very first floor is considered the basement or something like that. Uh, but these are the ones that are equal in level to you. And I'm assuming these trainers will always have the same team. So like every time we fight Teddy Bear Guy over here, Teddy Bear Guy will always have the same team. Uh, but obviously they're not, every single trainer will not be identical. Uh, so let's fight, uh, well, let's fight Teddy Bear Guy. Uh, let's lead with Barrascuda. So he has a Mag Cargo. Um, this is an easy liquidation. And then we've got a Rotom Regular, uh, which is Ghost Electric. I don't actually have a uh, Ground type, but Rotom's immune anyway. Oh, he, he withdrew. He swapped on me. Interesting. Okay, so we got Carbink, which I think is Fairy Rock. So that's less than ideal. Let's go into Kartana here. You got a Dazzling Gleam. And we go for a Steel's type Smart Strike, which will be four times effective. Now he goes back into Rotom. And let's go back to Hydreigon, because this is a Ghost type. So we can hit him with a... Actually, we can play Nasty Plot here. He Volt Switches out. We got... Basculin, which is just water type. I'm just going to Dark Pulse. Oh, he's got Aqua Jet. Okay. Well, that's still Nasty Plot boosted Dark Pulse. I'm just going to Dark Pulse here. And Dark Pulse. And then Rotom, Dark Pulse. <laughs> High Dragon is, is ridiculous. And then we'll just heal up. Okay, so that was pretty easy. I missed how much we won there. Uh, let's try one of the higher difficulty trainers up. Uh, I guess we got to go up another floor. There we go. Let's try someone a little bit harder. Let's try this one. Sure. Uh, what do we want to lead with? Probably. I'm kind of liking the ideal. Do you want to have U-turn on Corviknight? I do not. Okay, let's lead. Uh, let's just lead Barrascuda again. That's fine. All right, so we have a high dragon now. Uh, we should just be able to close combat this thing. He dropped a Draco, but missed. Close combat takes out high dragon. He's got his own. Uh, Azu is a little bit of a problem. Uh, we should be able. Let's see, what would Azu use here? Probably play rough. Uh, we can go Toxapex. Knocks off our Black Sludge, which is a bit annoying. But then we can just Toxic. And we can just recover. And we can essentially Toxic stall this Azu Marill. Uh, if this, and I'm thinking it's Choice Band Azu, because it keeps spamming knockoff. But this Azu will be gone very soon. We'll just keep recovering. One more and that takes care of that. What's next? Gengar. Okay, Gengar is a bit annoying. Um, I think the play here is to go High Dragon. We'll see what he does. Gengar has a decent move pool. Okay, Shadow Ball is not going to do too much. We can just Dark Pulse. That'll one shot the Gengar. And now we got a Rillaboom, which is annoying. Let's just go Corviknight. Corviknight can deal pretty easily with uh, Rillaboom here, so I'm not worried about that at all. And we can just Brave Bird. That'll be pretty decent damage. Yeah, there we go. And we've got a Gliscor. Okay, now I wish I had brought... Uh, 
<laughs> now I kind of wish I brought uh, Nitto Queen, because then I would have Ice Beam. Gliscor is real annoying to deal with. Um, I think what we probably want to do here is roost up. Oh, he's got Swords Dance as well. Oh, that's real bad. That's actually real bad. This is Toxic Stall Gliscor. Um, and he probably has Earthquake as well. So I think we're going to go to Hydreigon, and we're just going to plan to sack Hydreigon. Oh, he's still going. Okay. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's dropped two Swords Dances now. I'm just going to drop a Draco Meteor on him. It's not going to kill. Now I just need something that's faster than Gliscor. Um, Kartana should... Do I have Scarf on this? I do not. So Gliscor is 95 base speed. What is Kartana? Way faster. So Kartana should outspeed Barascuta. What's Barascuta? I should check that as well. Barascuta is crazy fast too. So we should just be able to go to Barascuta and Liquidation here. So that all those, uh, all that, uh, Swords Dance stuff doesn't actually do anything. Um, Aegislash, I th think we're best off going Volcarona. Oof, that one hurt. Um, so we can't Quiver Dance here. I think we just fire off a Heat Wave. Yeah, there we go. And that is the battle. So not too bad. That was not terrible. Uh, considering I had no idea what I was up against. It also appears that these trainers, unlike the ones at the lighthouse, which were very themed, like there was like a water trainer and a fighting trainer and like so on and so forth. It seems like these ones have a much more sort of diverse, well-rounded team, which I think is good. And then we've got this guy who is, I'm assuming, well, it says boss uncommon. So he, his team will probably be five levels higher than everything I have. So let's give this guy a try and just kind of see. We have a Heatran. Okay. Um, I mean, liquidation? Eruption. That is gotta be Scarf. Is that Scarfed Heatran? That's such a weird. Okay. Um, I don't really have much here. High Dragon, I guess, and Earth Power. I mean, then again, he is five levels higher, so there is that. Uh, Hoopa is what? Uh, dark Psychic? So... Dark Pulse? See what happens? That's decent. We got a little, a little flinch there. Um, dark Pulse again. Can we get a third flinch? Or a second flinch? Nope. No second flinch. Okay, that's fine. Uh, and then we'll go Kartana. And I think here we just go for a Leaf Blade, which will finish off the Hoopa that gives Kartana a nice speed boost. Kyurem, uh should be able to just hit him with a Smart Strike or he'll be faster. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Volcarona? Uh, Quiver Dance? All right, we got the Quiver Dance off. Uh, let's see. Kyurem... Is this Kyurem White, I think? Or is this just regular Kyurem? I can barely tell. The icon is so small. I think it's just regular Kyurem. Yeah, it's definitely regular Kyurem. Okay, so Dragon Ice. Um, I mean, I can Heat Wave, but I don't think it's actually going to kill. But we'll do it anyway. It's good damage, but yeah. we're Oh, Volcarona lived. What a boss. Okay. Now we got a Kartana. I've already gotten a Quiver Dance. It's Scarfed. Okay, we did burn it, which is good. Um, we'll go Corviknight here, and I'll hit it with a Body Press. I think we're probably gonna lose this, but like, you never know. Tapu Lele. So, Fairy Psychic. Uh, I do not have a Steel-type move on this Pokemon. Um, Let's just do a little roost here. Oh, it has Thunderbolt. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so 
Yeah, unless we can beat... So we're gonna have to go for Toxic Hack. Yeah, we're gonna lose, because we can't, uh, we can't outlive. We can't stall out the Tapu Lele. So we lost that one. Okay, but this is all, it's all about intel. It's all about, like, learning what these trainers actually have, and then building a team to, uh, to counteract them. So I think that went fairly okay. Uh, we'll just kind of have to know that he's got a lot of really fast Pokemon. Um, and then, you know, go from there. So anyway, not bad. Uh, I think I'm actually, you know what? I don't know why I'm going back down. Let's just head home. Uh, we are still working. Actually, let's do this. Warp Gym. Uh, is it Warp Gym? Gym rules. There we go. I'm still actually working on my team for the Fire Normal type gym, which is our next one. It'll be uh, 4v4, so I need four Pokemon that are all level 55. And uh, yeah, I don't have that team figured out yet. I, ha I don't even really have it planned. I have a couple ideas, but with the Little Cup tournament, I wanted to make sure that I had my Little Cup uh, player warps. Oh, it's Hurst. Um, yeah, the um, bleh, words, my, my brain is like... <laughs> I'm a little scatterbrained right now. Um, yeah, so anyway, the Little Cup tournament kind of took up uh, all of my breeding. Uh, so, like, I've been breeding Little Cup Pokemon for the last couple weeks just to make sure that I had my team ready for the tournament uh, from last episode. So now I need to kind of get back on track and start working on gym teams again. So I'm going to start planning that out, and uh, I'll come back to you once I've got some, some plans. Okay, my friends, I have the team planned out and almost ready. So the team is going to be Blastoise, Rhyperior, Barrascuta, and Pelipper. Unfortunately, I don't have the Pelipper yet. Um, <laughs> it's the only one I'm still missing. I'm working on it. We're bre I'm breeding it right now. I've got one here that's a female, um, but I do have very good flying egg group Pokemon to breed it with, so hopefully I'll be able to get it uh, within the next day, I'd say. Um, unfortunately, though, uh, I don't think we're going to have it quite in time for me to get this video out, so we'll probably end up doing the battle uh, in the next episode, but I think it's going to be a really solid team. It's going to be a fire normal type gym. So I think a rain team will be pretty solid. Pelipper has Drizzle to instantly summon rain. Uh, Rhyperior will be a rock type uh, that also, uh, when it's fully evolved, its ability Rockhead turns into, I think it's called Solid Rock. Basically what it does is it halves the damage from super effective attacks. So it's, it's basically like not having weaknesses at all, uh, but it will still resist uh, normal type moves. So I think Rhyperior will be really good, and it learns Rain Dance. So like all in all, I just think it's going to be a really solid team. Uh, also, Blastoise is actually amazing now because it got uh, Shell Smash as of Generation Eight, which is just like one of the most broken moves in all of Pokemon. So uh, Blastoise is actually good. So yeah, I'm excited. I think it's going to be a really good team, uh, and I think it'll get the job done. But as I said. I'm waiting on Pelipper. It's the only one I don't have that uh, I don't have yet, and it's kind of the most important Pokemon on the team because it's the one that actually summons rain. Uh, so I can't like swap in a Mudkip or I, I did think about using uh, Mudkip, by the way. Well, not Mudkip, but uh, Marsh Marsh Tomp. Is that right? Whatever Mudkip's fully evolved form is, my brain is. Swampert. Swampert. It's Swampert. Uh, it's still... Yeah. I, I have not yet consumed enough coffee today. Uh, but anyway, yeah, we'll probably do that next episode. The actual gym battle. And then... Uh, oh, wait. Warp. There we go. And then after we do the fire normal type gym, we have a steel ground type gym. Which is going to be interesting as well. That one's level... Uh, that one's teams of five i'm honestly really excited to get up to uh and through gym eight so we can start taking on the hard mode gyms because the hard mode gyms are all level 100 which means i can take advantage 
of all of these competitive Pokemon that I already have bred and ready to go. So uh, I think the gym battles will be a little bit faster. Like they'll come, we'll, we'll be doing gym battles uh, more frequently, I guess you would say, once we get through the uh, the normal mode stuff and we get up into hard mode. But right now, uh, I can't use Pokemon that are level 100 because they have to be, you know, whatever the level cap is for the gym. So that's kind of the plan. But um, I'm running a bit low on time. This episode needs to get out to you guys. So I think I'm going to call this one right here. My friends, if you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Links in the description below, so check that out as well. Otherwise, my friends, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.